In this lesson, I will work some example problems using the concept of momentum. First, uh, let's figure out what would happen uh, if I have a car of mass 500 kilograms and going 20 meters per second and a truck with mass 10,000 kilograms going 10 meters per second. Uh, what happens if they collide and stick together? Well, uh, the net force on the system, if we define the car and the truck together to be the system, then the net force on that system is equal to zero uh, because the car exerts a force on the truck, the truck exerts a force on the car, those forces are equal and opposite, so they cancel. The net force on the system is zero because the net force on the system is equal to zero. Momentum must be conserved. In other words, the change in momentum, or delta P, must be equal to zero. That means that we can say the momentum before the crash has to equal the momentum after the crash. Okay, so uh, before the crash, we have the momentum of the car uh, plus the momentum of the truck. Okay, and then after the crash, they're stuck together, so they have to have the same momentum. That would be the momentum of, say, the car and the truck together. Well, before the crash, the momentum of the car will be equal to the mass of the car times the velocity of the car. Uh, before the crash, the momentum of the truck is the mass of the truck times the velocity of the truck. And we can put vector symbols here on all of these, actually. Uh, and afterward, we have the mass of the car and truck together times the final velocity of the car and the truck together. Okay, uh, now we can start plugging in numbers. And since the car and the truck are both moving along the same line, one of them's going to the right, the other one's going to the left, then to take into account the vector nature of momentum, uh, we can just say that uh, uh, objects moving to the right is, are positive. Okay. Uh, and then we'll plug in numbers, and we can uh, replace the vector symbols just with either positive or negative. Positive if it's to the right, and negative if it's to the left. Okay, mass of the car, that's 500 kilograms. The velocity of the car before the collision is 20 meters per second, and it's to the right, so that's a positive 20 meters per second. Okay. Then we'll add the mass of the truck, 10,000 kilograms, times the velocity of the truck. That is a negative 10 meters per second. That must equal the mass of the car plus the mass of the truck, which is 10,500 kilograms. Uh, and then the velocity of the car and the truck after the collision, which is what we're looking for. In this, we have uh, 5 times 20. So that would be 10,000 kilogram meters per second minus 100,000 
kilogram meters per second, uh, which would be a negative 90,000 kilogram meters per second. You need to divide both sides by 10,500 kilograms. to get the final velocity of the car and the truck. The kilograms will cancel, and I'm going to end up with meters per second, which is, of course, the correct units for a velocity. Then we'll need our calculator to divide 90,000 by 10,500. That gives us approximately 8.6 meters per second squared, or not squared, just uh, meters per second, excuse me. So the velocity of the car and the truck together, negative 8.6 meters per second. Since right is defined as positive, that means it's going to the left. So the car, even though it was going twice as fast, uh, ends up getting turned completely around and going back in the other direction at 8.6 meters per second, while the truck uh, was going 10 meters per second, it slows down by 1.4 meters per second to go 8.6 meters per second. So uh, the truck, because it's so much more massive, uh, it kind of comes out ahead in this. Uh, and uh, both vehicles end up moving off to the left together. Well, that is one example of using conservation of momentum uh, to solve a problem. Uh, I will work other examples using momentum to solve problems in other recordings.